All right, we're still working on intermediate algebra section 4.3. This is the second video, so we're starting with example 6 on page 152. We're going to add and subtract rational expressions that have different denominators. So referring back to the rule for all fractions, you cannot add or subtract until these denominators have are the same. So we're going to find a common denominator. In the last video, we practiced finding the common denominator by listing our denominators and then breaking them down to prime factors. So these are the prime factors. Um, the common denominator takes the entire first list, so I'm going to take an x, and then looks at the second list. I already have one of these x's, so I need to take one more. When I multiply those together, that's both of these lists taken care of. The common denominator is x squared. So now I need to change. This one's fine because it already has x squared. I won't change this one, but this one I will have to change. So I'm going to put my denominator here, my new denominator, and then I look from the old to the new, what do I have to multiply by? x times what makes x squared, and that would be times x. So whatever I have to multiply on the bottom to make the new denominator, I also have to multiply on the top. And that's the basic rule for fractions. Whatever you do to the bottom, you also do to the top. So we end up having 2 times x, or 2x. If you change the denominator of any fraction, you also have to change the numerator. That is the basic rule for fractions. Now, this one already has the denominator I want, so I don't need to change this one. My subtraction sign comes down, and now they have the same denominator. Do not go canceling. This would be perfectly fine to simplify, but then you mess up your common denominator. The point is not to cancel these. When you're adding, subtracting, you get a common denominator first. You cancel at the end if you need to. So the denominator is going to be x squared. We talked about this before. Whatever these two denominators are, same as this one. The numerators will get subtracted. Uh, these are not like terms. So 2x minus 13 doesn't simplify any further. So 2x minus 13 over x squared. Now, you cannot cancel these x's here because this one is part of a term. You cannot cancel terms. You can only cancel factors. So this is your final answer here. All right, example 7, still on page 152, says 3 fourths plus 7 over 6x plus 5 over 2x. With different denominators, the first thing we need to do is find a common denominator. So we're going to do that over here. I'm going to first list my denominators, and then I'm going to break them down into prime factors. The prime factors of 4, the prime factors of 6x, and the prime factors of 2x. And then I will find the common denominator. Take the whole first list, 2 times 2. Look at the second list. All right, I already have a 2, but I don't have a 3 or an x. So I'm going to take those. Then look at the last list. I already have 2. I have at least one 2 already, and I already have an x, so I don't need anything. So multiply these together. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times x is 12x. Your common denominator is 12x. So we're going to change all three of these fractions to a denominator of 12x. So I'm just going to write that here. And it's a matter of multiply. 4 times what makes 12x? 4 times 3 would be 12, and then times x would be 12x. So the same thing in the numerator. When I multiply them together, I get 9x. 6x times what makes 12x? 6x times 2 makes 12x. So 7 times 2 in the numerator. 2x times what makes 12x? 2x times 6, so times 6 in the numerator gives me 30. Now, Yes, these all cancel. This will cancel, this will cancel, this will That's fine. You don't want to cancel at this point because you'll be going backwards. You want them to be like this so that the denominators are all the same. That was the point. 
And yes, I'm glad that you recognize that they will reduce, but you don't want to reduce at this point. When you're adding and subtracting, you want to reduce at the end. So our denominator is going to be 12x. Our numerator, we're going to add and we'll combine like terms. So we have 9x plus 14 plus 30. And the 14 and the 30 are like terms. So we end up with 9x plus 44 over 12x. Now you might be thinking, can I reduce it now? These x's cannot reduce because this one's part of a term. The 9 and the 12 cannot reduce because this is part of a term. The only way I'd be able to reduce this is if I could factor out a GCF here, and then the GCF might factor, might cancel with the 12. But 9 and 44 do not have any factors in common, so we're done. Okay, example 8 is on the top of page 153. 1 over x minus x over x squared minus 6x. We need to do the common denominator first. So let's do that over here. We're going to list our two denominators. And we're going to break them down to prime factors. Well, the prime factor of x is just x. Um, x squared minus 6x has a GCF of x. So when I factor it out, I have x times x minus 6. And then I'm going to list my denominators for my common denominator, my factors. Take the whole first list and then look at the second list. I already have this x here, so I just need to add on x minus 6. And this will be my common denominator. Now I'm going to list it over here so I can change my numerators. Um, it turns out that x squared minus 6x is equal to x times x minus 6. So this denominator is really not changing. We just changed it to a factor form. So this numerator doesn't need to change either. This denominator did change. So we have to think about multiply. x times what makes this new denominator? It will be x times x minus 6. So we're going to have to multiply times x minus 6. in the numerator. And that, of course, is just going to give us x minus 6. Now we have the same denominator. We're not going to reduce until we get to the end. So we're going to carry our denominator down, x times x minus 6. And then we're going to do some subtraction up here and combine like terms. So we'll have x minus 6 from here minus an x. And there are some like terms here. These two x's are like terms. Uh, when I try to combine them, they actually cancel each other because this one's a positive 1 and this one's a negative 1. So I end up with negative 6 over x times x minus 6. And I know you're saying, great, let's cancel these negative 6. No, this one is part of a binomial. It's a term. So it cannot cancel with this one. So this is your final answer here. All right, on to example 9 on page 153. I have 2 over x squared plus 6x plus 8 plus x over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 4. I don't have time room over here for my common denominator, so I'm just going to list the factors underneath these denominators. This is a standard trinomial, so this factors to be x plus 4, x plus 2, and these are actually prime. So they don't factor at all. I'm just going to use the parentheses to remind me they're binomials, and I can't use terms separately. So our common denominator has to have this whole first list, x plus 4, x plus 2. But then these are both covered already, so they won't add anything extra on. So our common denominator is x plus 4, x plus 2. So let's list this, x plus 4, x plus 2. x plus 4. I'm changing all three of these fractions to the same denominator. It turns out this first one didn't change. Oops, I wrote this wrong though.
this first one did not change. The denominator is the same, so the numerator will also remain unchanged. The second one, x plus 2 times what? Well, this was multiplied times x plus 4. So you're always looking from the old to the new and what changed. So we multiplied times an x plus 4. So we'll that, get, do that in the numerator, and that gives us x squared plus 4x when I distribute. Look from the old to the new. What's changed is this x plus 2, so that's what I need to multiply in the numerator. And of course, that's just going to give us x plus 2. Now, they all have the same denominator, so my answer is going to have a denominator of x plus 4, x plus 2, and then I'm going to add, this is all addition, all these numerators together and combine like terms. So I have 2 plus x squared plus 4x plus x plus 2, and that means I need to look for uh, like terms. Well, here's some like terms here, and these twos are also like terms. So that's going to give us, in descending order, x squared plus 5x plus 4 over x plus 4, x plus 2. And I can see again that I wrote this wrong. but it won't erase. So this should be a 4. Okay, so the whole question here is standard trinomial, does this trinomial factor? It looks to me like the factors would be x plus 4, x plus 1. Those would be the factors of this numerator, and the denominator is still x plus 4, x plus 2, which means these x plus 4s can cancel. So we're left with x plus 1 over x plus 2, and do not, I know you're tempted to cancel these x's, but these are terms. They're pieces of binomials. Binomials can only cancel with other whole binomials. You cannot cancel terms. So this is your final answer here. All right, example 10 on the top of page 154. This is the last example for this section. We have two new rationals that we're going to subtract. So x over x squared minus 3x plus 2 minus 17 over x squared plus 2x minus 8. Um, obviously, these are not the same denominator, so I'm going to start by factoring these denominators. This would be x minus 2, x minus 1. And this would be x plus 4, x minus 2. All right, so the common denominator, we take the whole first list. So let's write these down here. We're going to take x minus 2, x minus 1, and that takes care of this denominator. And then I look here, do I have any of these already? I already have x minus 2, so I only need to add on x plus 4. And that will be the common denominator, so I'll use that for both fractions. x minus 2, x minus 1, x plus 4. And both those denominators are now taken care of. Now, look from the old to the new. What's changed? I put on this x plus 4, so that's what needs to get multiplied in the numerator. x plus 4. And when I distribute that, I get x squared plus 4x. Then here, Look from the old to the new. What's changed is this x minus 1. So that's what I need to multiply in the numerator. When I distribute that 17, I get 17x minus 17. Now, the denominators are the same. No canceling till we get to the end. So we're going to carry that denominator down here. x minus 2, x minus 1 x plus 4, and then I'm going to uh, subtract these numerators, but do not forget when you have a subtraction it needs to distribute 
to every term behind it. So I have two terms here. They're going to get that negative sign. So that's going to give me x squared plus 4x from here. And then when I distribute this, I will get negative 17x plus 17. If you do not remember to distribute the negative signs when there are multiple terms behind it, you will end up with wrong signs down here. Now, I see some like terms um, here. So I'm just going to combine those like terms. So I have x squared minus 13x plus 17 over x minus 2 x minus 1, x plus 4. Um, at this point, um, the next logical step will be to, to factor this numerator to see if any of these binomials would come out of it to do some canceling, because this would be the point where you do your reducing. However, the only factors that 17 has are 17 and 1, and we can't get a 13 in the middle. There are no factors of 17 that add to make negative 13. So this trinomial is not going to factor. It's, it's a prime trinomial. So there will be no reducing here. So this is our final answer. All right, bring your questions to class. I'll see you then.